talking about Parkside in the Bronx, uh, uh, in New York. You know, like in 2000 through like what 2003. Yeah, man, it's actually rocking. Dude, from probably about ninety five to like two thousand five, yeah, two thousand four, like like extremely heavy, yeah, heavy. I'm talking like a like a a light show was four hundred women, like a a regular show was seven hundred, and the big shows we got over a thousand. It, it used to be bananas. It was there was even cops outside, like our cops would go outside clubs and everything. They'll be outside hanging, trying to get at the women. Yeah. Yeah, because there was women, so much women out there. Yeah, you because you, you weren't gonna get any drama, dude. You got there was never no drama. There. Yeah, dude, you got a, you got a thousand, you got seven hundred women on the average, and at most you would get two hundred guys at the after party, at most. So if you were a guy partying in there, you had a great time. And and great time. And then now, great time. now it's not your normal setting where you show up to the club and then the woman kind of has her little defense and her walls up and she's a little standoffish because oh, the no. ice is broken because she's been getting humped on by male strippers for two hours before you showed up. So she's just ready for an attention. And it was, it was, uh, also, man, shout out to all the guys out there because at a time like that, you see the the manners out of dudes like homeboy love. Even if I don't know you, hey, what's up, partner? All right, yeah, go ahead, man. You walking out? But go ahead, fam. Go ahead, yeah. fam. <laughs> it was like dudes were cool, super cool. Like dudes was cool. Like yo, hold on, let me put my car. Can you move back a little bit? I got you. Let's yeah, come on. We got. We gonna get these girls. It was crazy. Yeah. How many women was out there? And I'm like, the power of uh, the male uh, uh, dancer for women uh, is kind of crazy. And what you and the staff were doing, it it had to be respected. It's yeah, yeah. Well, well. See, you know what, man? It, there's, you know, there's such a stereotype. Yeah, keep it clean, though. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there, there there's a stereotype with with the male dancer for people who who haven't experienced the the business of the inside of it. So when most people initially think about it. You know, you think just think about some dude up on stage and he's getting dollar bills and you don't you don't see where you look into it on a deeper note. No matter how people feel about male dancers, it's always going to be here because women are always going to get married. And there's always going to be that scenario that whoever came up with and that tradition. Too. Yeah. So whoever came up with that tradition that, you know, when a woman gets married, you got to have a guy come and dance or whatever the case may be. That's that's gonna be rev, rev, um, that's gonna be existing as long as there's weddings going on. So now you look at the dynamic of it. Women, they things that are, are available to men that are not available to them. That's an issue. So for men, we can go to a strip show, a strip club every night of the week. Right now, we got women and female strip clubs just as much as men trying to socialize and enjoy that environment. Because it's not available to them. So the minute they do get an atmosphere that's centered around them, it's not just, hey, we enjoy being here, but it's almost, hey, I'm going to get that chip off my shoulder because he goes out and he does this, you know, two, three times a month with his buddies and it's never available to me. So they come in with an attitude like the alibi. Like I'm going all the way in. I'm going to have fun. It's like. It's like it's almost spite to their men that they have at home. So that's why the women get in there and they go absolutely bonkers. You know, you see guys in, in the strip club and you get you get your couple of drunk guys that get out of hand. But for the most part, we just sit down, chilling with a couple of dollars, have a drink and have a good time. But these women are absolutely bananas. It's like it's they don't almost get that. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's like it's like it's suppressed, right? And right. it's like I got to get it all out because right. I don't, I may never be back in here, you know. It's thermal sound waves talking to Sheree Hayes here, <laughs> exotic dancer. So, but so, so, so your so your so your name though, uh, Punisher, Punisher. Punisher. Yeah. So how does the business work? Like, is it you, you got a retirement plan? You got four hundred one k? Like, like yeah. Well, I mean, what, what, is it lucrative? Is it, is it like a regular <laughs> business? Like, how does it all break down? Well, it's it's gonna break down based on your popularity, you know, like any service you're offering. It doesn't matter how good the service is, 
it, it is not going to make money if nobody knows about it. So the fact that you guys are two, two, two heterosexual men that ain't got no interest in what goes on in the male stripping world, not if you know who I am, then... My popularity is where I needed to be. You're an OG. Though. This is what it is. You're an OG. Yeah. So it's, it's some people's names, it doesn't matter if you're into that, you're not into that. Certain people, you, their names ring bells. And it's it's what it is. When some women realize he's going to be on the show, they already told me, Kev, you got to tell them to do this. <laughs> they go, I got to see the apps. You got to make, make muscles on the show. Get in from the camera. It's what it is. When I mentioned your name, when the email blast went out, before I even, even finish saying Punisher, before I say sure, mm-hmm. then we start smiling. And it's like, that power is crazy. Yeah. I mean, you know, dude, they like, see, one, one advantage that I have is I've been a part, over the years, I've probably done, no exaggeration, this is a real number, about over 5,000 parties. And that's just in this area. And... We're going to say... 5,000 parties seriously, just dude. in the New York Tri-State Just in the area. Tri-State area. Dude. How many years? September be 16, man. Wow. Yeah, 16 years, wow. dude. I'm a vet. I'm a vet. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so and then look at what type of parties they are. They're bachelorette parties, dude. So I'm there at, at probably associated with other than like her wedding herself and probably the birth of a birth of children that's like one of the highlights of a woman's life like it's her best rep party so it's her her closest friend her family her mom her mother-in-law and i'm their entertainment so they're never gonna forget about me dude Mm-hmm. Like I'm in that I'm in that photo album that is a part of like their history. Even the and the, the photo thrown. album underneath the photo album. Yeah, exactly. So and, you know that and, one exists. And then and then there's one underneath that in a safe because they has they had something held. <laughs> it's thermal sound waves. Call face. us up two one two four nine one four six eight five. We're talking to Sheree Hayes here. Now, well, what were your that. aspirations before? Before that, was that something you wanted to get into? Did you fall into that? Like, how did you get to the path of doing all 16 years of of that Over business? How did you get there? Shows. Like, what was what was the first time like? Like, how did you even well get to that world? Well, I mean, the the way I got into it, um, real real story. How I got introduced to it was, I would it was through breaking up with. At the time, my uh, high school sweetheart. I came out. Of, I came out of high school. I'm still with my girl. I'm. I'm a first relationship. I'm in love. Like I don't know what. What was her name? Uh, Elisa. And um, she uh, she started working in a female strip club. She mm-hmm. came home one day. Hey, I need to make extra money. So she started working there. And then you know, I had a heart attack. You know. So wait, she, wait, wait, wait. Did she say? Hey, I need to make extra money. What do you think? Or I'm already doing it. Oh no, I ain't have no choice, dude. I okay. was, I got chumped, you know. So, but you know what? I stayed with her. You know, I, I had that belief that it was just gonna be her waitressing or whatever the case it was gonna be. And you know, we rode like that for a year or so, and she just came home one day like, "Yo, I want my freedom." She's in there. She's meeting all these men, and you know, oh, I "Yo, I want my freedom." That's it's a starts. wrap. Yep, I want, I want my, freedom. my freedom. It's a wrap. He was free. So me. <laughs> Me, you know, feeling like her getting into that business was the cause of us breaking up and all that. Being young at the time, I was 21, turning 22, I was, okay, I want to see how she feels, you know. So I'm going to go out, I'm going to do the same thing. So So spite. I did it on spite just to get her jealous, dude. Just to get her jealous to try to get her back. And, dude, I went out one time, one time. To do a show, and now I'm and with all these women, and I can basically do what I want to them and get paid for it, and that's the best breakup I ever had, dude. Tasted the fruit, and it was gone. It was a wrap. It was a wrap. She did me a favor. Good looking, Elisa. If you listening, I love you, girl. Good looking. <laughs> now, 